So my name is Magnus Almgren, and I will present Riot, so uh, Resilient Internet of Things. And this is a project sponsored by MSB, the Civil Contingency Agency. Uh, so in the team, we have two nodes. It's a joint project between Uppsala. We have Christian Rohner as the uh, senior uh, researcher. And at Chalmers, you have me as the senior researchers. And then we have a set of PhD students. So in some ways, when we look at IoT, we have complementary views. So first we look at the hardware or the device in itself, but we also consider the software and the data collection. We also look at the individual devices contra uh, a network of devices, the collection of IoT. So the goals, uh, the vision of the project is basically that we look at the applications driven by Internet of Things, and we try to make it more resilient because we start to see them used in critical infrastructures. We try to detect cyber attacks and mitigate them when they happen, and data is really in the center because we collect a lot of data and we need to understand uh, when we can trust the data and when nodes are compromised and attacked. So in the project we have three goals. So the first is really focused on data, so data prominence, uh, provenance and trusted data. Uh, we also look at distributed security management and attack detection. And in the third goal, we look at how we can communicate uh, the results from the project uh, in an interdisciplinary fashion. So in this talk, I'll focus mostly on goal one and two and speak a little bit about the research output. If you're interested in third, the third goal, uh, come and uh, see me in the mingle. And as I said, we really look at the individual devices uh, contra a network of devices, because sometimes it's easy to focus on a single device to harden it, to make it more difficult to attack. Uh, but sometimes you need the resources of more nodes working together to mitigate an attack. Uh, you've heard a lot of IoT, uh, and I thought I would show you this schematic uh, figure to kind of show where we work. So we are on the uh, mostly on the bottom, so constrained devices. There is still a range. Uh, and we worked with very constrained embedded devices to more powerful things that might have a GPU. Uh, sometimes we go up into the fog layer, very seldom on the cloud side. So really focused uh, on the bottom. Uh, so for the rest of the talk, I'll speak a little bit about the research uh, activities that we've had recently. Uh, so this will be a relatively fast overview, and the goal is for you to kind of recognize something, and then see Christy and me in the mingle. Uh, so we have had several contributions to doctoral and licentiate thesis. Uh, but if we look at the uh, contributions, you can basically categorize them in five different areas. We looked at hardening individual devices. We have the provenance and trusted uh, data. We have uh, attack detection for IoT, and we've also looked at the more powerful classifiers you might get from deep learning and how you can bring those down to the nodes. And finally, we have uh, uh, some theoretical findings in understanding a collection of uh, intrusion detection systems. So basically, if you have uh, a collection of nodes and you have different systems uh, running together, it's important to understand uh, where they work uh, and strengthen each other and where they might actually just uh, be redundant. So if we look at the first part, uh, hardening on the device, uh, we can see that for more powerful systems, we have good algorithms. So uh, Argon2 is uh, one such example. But it's diffi uh, difficult to bring down these algorithms to the constrained devices because they are uh, incompatible with the uh, constrained nature of the devices. They really build to use a lot of resources to make it difficult for the attacker to use them. Uh, so we've developed Klippaha, where we uh, consider the client and the server, and we move some of the work from the server to the client side. So we do uh, password stretching on the client, and we can demonstrate that uh, with this scheme, we can run powerful algorithms, even uh, where the server side runs on very uh, constrained hardware. So we use the ESP8266. 
uh, going to provenance and trusted data with uh, uh, investigated blockchains. But blockchains and IoT uh, is very challenging. Uh, for example, you have a problem with bandwidth, you have a problem with uh, the energy consumption, and uh, sometimes it's also difficult to have readouts from the local node. So you want to access the actuator and the sensors, uh, but you don't really have any opportunity to do so. So we investigated and we demonstrated that we can actually use uh, uh, blockchain smart contract and uh, offline contract signing protocols uh, on IoT devices. And we also developed a scheme where we have new opcodes uh, in the virtual machine so we can access the local environment of the sensor to use the actuators or collect the sensor data. Then uh, we go into attack detection and then we have investigated how we can take intrusion detection systems and move to uh, more powerful IoT devices but also very uh, constrained embedded systems. So as you might know, we have two types. We have knowledge-based uh, systems. Here, we usually focused on known attacks. We try to create a signature, and then in the background, we have some sort of a pattern matching to see if the signature matches the traffic we see. On the other hand, we have behavior-based, usually driven by machine learning, uh, where we usually learn the normal traffic or create the profile, and we detect any anomaly from this uh, profile. And the contributions in the project actually touches on both of these sides. So if we look at first the knowledge-based, uh, with uh, the architecture on some of the IoT devices uh, can be differs and uh, are a little bit constrained. And that has an impact on the type of pattern matching algorithm, uh, algorithm that you would run. So we investigated how they would fare on different types of devices. And we could also suggest a new hybrid approach that would actually outperform the existing ones. We've also looked at anomaly detection, uh, where we uh, started from a system developed for ICS. Uh, you've already heard of it in, if you went to the RICS presentation earlier. Uh, so that was the uh, uh, starting point. Uh, and we could show that we could actually put it to very constrained uh, 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 hardware uh, because the algorithm in itself doesn't use so much uh, resources. We've also looked a little bit at deep learning. So you have already heard the paradigm sh uh, shift in AI. And from the perspective of Riot, we have classifiers, so very powerful classifiers. But opportunities and challenges to bring them to uh, nodes so they work well in the cloud, but uh, on the constrained nodes, you have energy, CPU, and memory uh, constrained, uh, uh, constraints. And when you look for training, it's even more difficult. But here we started out looking at an overview of what existing there to run uh, deep learning networks on constrained devices. Then we went to transfer learning. Uh, so basically, you can train something in the cloud, then you can bring it to the uh, is an individual node where you can change the model using transfer learning based on the context where the node is running. And that worked quite well. And the latest result is a much more general framework in having uh, learning on constrained devices directly. And the final topic uh, is the composed intrusion detection systems. As I said, we have a collection of nodes and a collection of uh, attack detection techniques, IDSs, that runs at the same time. And we want to combine this system maybe to decrease uh, the uh, false alarm rate, uh, to make sure that we have a better system. Uh, we also want to make it resilient against uh, at, uh, adaptive adversaries. Uh, so we tackle this from an information th uh, theoretic approach, and we look at robustness when we combine detectors, and try to find ways where we can look at the full system and then understand how we should tune the individual uh, detection algorithms to have the best results. So this was very, very quickly what we're doing. So find us in the mingle and we can speak more about the particular results that you're interested in. So thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you.